welcome to the Good Morning Education Show. Uh, my name is Roti Meitaya, and we're excited to have you here live and direct. I was streaming from Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, to Africa, to the rest of the world. And this is the Good Morning Education Show. Please do let us know where you're connecting from. Um, do let us know where you're streaming from, your location. Tell us your name. And of course, please, if this is your first time, on the show, do not hesitate to let us know. Tell us it's your first time and we'll be happy and excited to engage you. And of course, to ring the bell of blessing to you. And we just want to set up a bit of um, technical issues with the video. And uh, you'll be seeing my face shortly. But um, while we're waiting for that to happen, please send me your greetings, send me your comments, send me your contributions. Uh, feel free uh, to have a very nice discussion. And uh, I believe that we're going to enjoy ourselves. Uh, like I said, the Good Morning Education Show is an exciting time for us to share together, learn together, and of course, go together as a people. And uh, today will not be an exception. We would like to see, uh, start off today. Um, by recognizing people who are joining us already. Thank you. Good morning, Linda from Otago. Good morning, Finn. Good morning, Gideon. Thank you for joining and I uh, appreciate your continuous uh, support and being a tribe member. I appreciate for that. Thank you very much. So today, um, we will not be wasting much time. Today, we'll be going straight to the point. We will be having a show talking about running a safe boarding school system. Running a safe boarding school system. And for some time now, we've had conversations around this directly and indirectly. And uh, I'm going to make today an exception. We're going to talk about it. So today we're talking about running a safe boarding experience. Um, yes, I have TT in the building. Good morning. Good morning. TT, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Good Morning Education Show. Good to have you online. Great to be here, as always. Yeah, I was just trying to introduce the session for today and the conversation we're going to be having. And um, we are recognizing those who've been joining us for, for some time now. We're recognizing Gideon, we're recognizing Gideon. Linda, Linda. Awesome tribe member. Good morning. Yeah. Finny Folu as well. Um, Good morning. And then Tony Sam Emelu. Wonderful. Um, she's here. Happy to be here. Well done. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Fantastic. All right. So without wasting much time, now. What happened to your video? Why are you copying me? <laughs> I'm, don't worry, I'm about to put on my video. <laughs> All right. I saw if you a moment ago. Um, yeah. It was in transit. <laughs> okay. Samson Udwak Orok is also here. What happened to your video? Why are you copying me? <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. Um, Samson is saying good morning to us. Samson? Is that, is that Samson? Good morning, Samson. 
Morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go straight to conversations today. Um, again, no news to today. No, no news today. No news is good news. <laughs> Okay. Um, so let's let's talk about our conversation today. If you can, I'm sure you know the topic. We're talking about running a safe boarding school system. Running a safe boarding school system. Hello. Can you hear we can, me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. I hope it wasn't like yesterday. <laughs> no, 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 the network is on point today. Okay, so um, let's go straight to the point. Um, boarding school systems have always been um, a, a topical issue um, amongst parents and sometimes within um, advocates and practitioners. We keep hearing from time to time um, the differences in the practice of running a boarding school system and sometimes based on differentiation based on brand promises uh, based on competition we we get to experience and see a lot of um things you know and in the bit of trying to make the boarding house or the body school of uh, services offered by a school experiential um we begin to read about so many stories that brings concern so today, let's just look at it as practitioners, as experts. Let's let's look at it because there's been the sweet and there's been the sour. Uh, we've had people who've done a fantastic job running a system, creating a system, um, and sometimes we've had not too fantastic experiences as well. Uh, bearing in mind that there's no perfect system, I'd like us to I'd like us to start on that note. So Titi. And I know that Titi has a, you actually a body school. How do I put it up? <laughs> You're uh, one who's gone through the system of I'm the body school. Yeah. So I think school. it's just right for you to start. Over I'm to you. <laughs> um, and then I currently have a child going through it as well. You know what I would say is when it comes to children, that, that's I want to start broadly. When it comes to children, you know, there's a lot of risk involved. Uh, so when I think of the boarding school system, what I always say is, you know, even in your own house, when your children stay with you, there are a lot of risk. What you as a parent try to do is to, as much as possible, de-risk your house, you know, such that the, the possibilities and probability are reduced. Not eliminated, but reduced. So I'll give you an example. You know how it is. You ensure that you, you don't put, leave hot oil on, on your cooker because you don't want anyone playing in the kitchen, heat the pan, and the hot oil falls on them. You know, and I can go on and on. It's the same thing if you have um, TV and you have DSTV, you know, cable TV, you put parental controls on them. Why are you doing all those things? All those things are steps that you take as a parent to de-risk, you know, a lot of things that can happen so when it comes to boarding school it's the same thing the school system needs to start out by saying what are all the things that can go wrong and then what structures and processes do we put in place to prevent them and how do we constantly monitor that because it's one thing to put the system in place it's one thing to have the structures in place but you need to have a process of monitoring it and then you also need to have a process of getting the feedback when things go wrong so that you can put in it so a lot has happened you know recently with what happened towards the tail end of last year for those of us that have gone to boarding school i'm saying a lot happens in boarding school um it's really the systems that are in place to continue to monitor it when you have children you know there's this thing about when you have little children and the house is quiet then you 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 are in trouble something is happening it's the same thing when you have a lot of children gather and there's nothing going on and something is happening so from 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 bullying you know i remember that i went to boarding school and in our boarding school we they used to put the food on the table i mean we were like 10 or 12 on the table and then but the the table had you know people of different classes i had seniors that would come in and take half of the food 
for two of them, and then the remaining ten of us or eight of us will share the balance. You know, both things are like. <laughs> Or you see them send you on all sorts of ridiculous errands and things like that. Or uh, or take your money and all that. I, I remember, uh, you know, can this thing happen in your house? Yes, it can happen in your house. When I think of the things my senior sisters did to us, their junior sisters, <laughs> in the same mother, same father, in the same house, you know? So what I'm just, first of all, I want to, you know, put it out there is that once you have children together, even the same family, a lot happen not to talk of children coming from different backgrounds with different value system the onus is on the school to put the things in place but even with that it's not a fail proof thing what will keep on happening is i keep on checking checking about it i know when we were uh, in school for you know children that bed wet what the seniors would do to them you know, there was, you know all sorts of things the difference is that if you reported, if the school found out, you know, they did take out your know, disciplinary actions, the children were suspended, some people were expelled, you know, but those, that those things happen, yes, they do happen, you know. I think it's also, um, you know, looking back in hindsight, it's also a two-way system whereby the school needs to put the structures in place to prevent all those things that can go wrong. They need to be monitoring it. They need to have a system that children can feel free to report. But the other honors is on the parents. You need to also prepare your child. You need to um, help the child know that they can come and tell you and you can escalate and something will be done. So I'll give you an example. Just, you know, when I was growing up, my senior sisters were the gods of the house. My mother was mini god, but my senior sisters were the super gods, you know. So my mom says A and my sister said B. If you like, go and do A instead of being B. <laughs> After all, mommy will go to work and you're left with your senior sister from morning to night. So you're better obey B rather than obey A. Do you understand? And even when my mom was asking you, they can't do anything. Say what they said. <laughs> you will not say. <laughs> do you understand? Because you know who the superpowers were <laughs> in the house. But those things happen. You know, I'm not trying to just give you an example of um being realistic so when you have so many children come together people that come from different upbringings and their parents they would want to do different things but the onus is on the school to keep implementing structures that will support that so when i was when, when i was in the school you know juniors after a while juniors lived away separately seniors they would live separately. The classrooms are way far from it. The school had a, a lot of things that they were implementing. Uh, you know, nowadays they do they do so many things. But would those things not happen? I would say no. Once once children come together, even in among even if they're all the same age, things will happen. But you have to have educated the children to know that this thing is bad. So you need to have a lot of sessions with them to say this thing is bad and if this kind of things happen to you this is what you should do there's a safe place for you to come there's you know and as a parent as well honestly as a parent as well i i had it i said having a sex education talk with my children so long nobody can talk to you here is they touch you here they do this they do this to you no you know when i speak to them I'm like did this happen because i know the things that can happen well no tell me what happened you know why didn't you tell your teacher about it Oh, okay. You know, well, if I tell the, the, the children, the other people will be laughing at me. I'm like, no, you know what? Okay, why not do it this way? So, well, the point I want to make is when it comes to running a safe um, school system, it requires everybody's effort. It takes time. You must never leave your, you know, take your eye off the ball. You must continually, continually, you must have a way whereby you get information. You know, there was a time when we were in school that the headmistress, um, your house parent will call you. They use it to find out what is happening. Because after a while, there's this, you know, you can't tell anything. But they will use, they, they know the people, they know the children that will tell you. They say, they're going to get those ones to try and find out what is happening. To so then try and, you know, put in again structures in place. Because these things, these things happen. Even when children amongst themselves come together, bullying happens, abuse happens. How much more when a large number of people come together? So I will end by saying each school must know, have a list of the risk, all the things that can go wrong. And they must ensure that for each of those things that can go wrong, they have policies, processes in place 
it, to, to safeguard that. They've trained the teachers, they've trained the students, they've also trained the parents because the parents can begin to you know, identify some of those things in their children and ensure that it's reported. Even in this school, bullying is happening. Children are being bullied. But the important thing that the school is constantly educating, the school has an avenue for identifying. The teachers are also educated to be able to, you know, begin to pick out the symptoms of those things that are happening. So if you have a child that loves food, and then suddenly, every time you're offering him food, he doesn't want to. Then you, you know, if you train the teacher, you begin to realize that there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And they need to call the child to a safe place to try and find out what is happening. And when they find out this is what's happening, they need to say, how can we prevent the occurrence? So it has happened. So when I look at what happened with people, like I, you know, what I said, and I'll say it again, it's not for every school to point fingers. It's for you to go back to your own school and say, the policy is the same that the process is put in place. Are they really working? Are they really working? What can we learn from another person's um, incident? I like what Safety Chief said, whereby when anything happens in the airline industry, they don't look at it and say, it can never happen to me. No. And instead, look and say, what are new policies that we can put in place? What are the additional tests of the system that we can put in place to guard and prevent the occurrence of this issue? I will rest my case here. So if you she's rested her case and you know who's next to talk, it's obviously you being the last one. Your mic is on mute. Oh, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so um Titi has covered a lot, you know. Um she has covered a lot, but what I want to say now or, or touch on is the fact that um, it's important that everyone is responsible, okay? Yeah. It's responsible for caring, you know, and, and, and um, ensuring safety of the children. Parents who bring, so now I'm looking at um, safety from the administrator's point of view, okay, from the school owner's point of view. Um, the boarding school management is a big deal. Okay, I remember going to the boarding school as well for basically my whole, <laughs> almost my whole life well, from secondary school, you know, from beginning to the end. And um, now that I sit back and I'm involved in, you know, man managing different aspects of schooling, I wonder, you know, the, I, I can now imagine that it's a, it's a lot of work. So, um, and it's not a one-man business. It's not something that you can achieve alone as an administrator. You need, so boarding school managers or management has to carry every single stakeholder along from your staff to the parents. When I say staff, teaching staff, cleaning staff, you know, every single person who is employed in your organization has to be carried along. And by carried along, I mean, um, that there has to be a sharing of relevant and um, coherent information. So the same information you give to your staff is the same information that you give to the parents, the same information that the children know, because the children are also responsible for staying safe. Um, maybe if, I, if there's time, I can talk about that a little bit more, but how children need to be aware you know, what to look out for, what, what you know, the telltale signs that there's danger so that they themselves can be responsible for their yeah. safety. So it's not, the onus is not only on the school management or, you know, or the safety personnel per se to um, be responsible for the children's safety. So ensuring that all staff work together, sharing the same information across the board um, that way, there's no room for um, misunderstandings and there's no room for, okay, oh, I'm not sure what to do in a particular situation or in a particular scenario. So there should be procedures put in place for um, reporting, for whistleblowing. If you see anything, anything that, you know, raises an, uh, a feather, you need to be able to say, this is what I need to do. Everyone needs to know, this is what I need to do 
to raise an alarm that, okay, there's something wrong. So there has to be those procedures put in place. Um, looking at the, the, the um, challenges that boarding school, man boarding school managers, managers or management could face, um, I remember one of the things we used to go through was children, you know, students escaping from the boarding school system, you know, um, we, we're always looking for a way <laughs> to leave the campus. We're always always looking for a way to escape, to go home, to go out, to go to party, to do, you know. Um, <laughs> so that's something that there, there needs to be checks and balances. Okay, how are you keeping track of your students? Are you aware per minute how many children you have on ground? And working as an early childhood practitioner, I know that we are always counting heads, you know, but as you're, you're in between transitions, you're, you're counting heads, you need to know how many children you have with you. It's the same thing. It's the same um, principle applies. You need to, apart from focusing on the education, okay, the, yeah, okay, how, what do we teach them to know how to be safe and all of that? It's about making sure that children are well accounted for. So who is responsible? Is there a personnel for that? Who is responsible for ensuring that every child is accounted for per time? So um, I, I'm gonna leave it there. There's, there's another thing of the pastoral care. We talked about that, I think a few days ago. You know, you need, is there someone who can, who can be there for these children in such a way that they know who to go to, where to go to. If I, if, if I feel unsafe, do I have a safe space? Do I have a safe person that I can run to at any time of the day? My parents are not there, no one is there, my family, but there is someone. And that brings in all we've talked about probably this whole week, counselors and, and you know, um, all the issue about pastoral care. Um, data security is another thing. <laughs> um, well, I think I'll leave all it right. there for now. So it's, a, it's about, it's about okay. knowing, <laughs> I so you, <laughs> you keep leaving it there, you're coming back to it. So drop it like it's hot. Um, <laughs> KK, KK, how are you this morning? I'm fine. Good morning. Good morning, KK, everyone. I, I, Good morning. Play, KK, I'm going to play I, a song for you tomorrow. What? Um, I'm going to play a song for you tomorrow. And I'll dance, I'll dance to the song for her. Yes. KK, you know I'm Every Woman by Whitney Houston. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. KK, every time you turn on your camera, there's a different KK look. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the song we'll play. We'll use, it, we'll use that song to, to either sign off tomorrow or to, to bring you in. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about uh, running a safe boarding school system. And um, I, I love the introduction from Titi and, of course, Ifyo. And I know that KK is revving to say a lot. Of course, one, you've spoken about this conversation for a long time. And I'm sure you've also had personal experiences. But just before I bring KK on, um, I like to stir the water a little bit more. Um, we need to recognize that is a body school or a body school system, right, is delivering on a promise, right? Um, and schools must recognize that. Whether you've gone out to say, this is what we are promising, or you are silent about it, there's a promise the moment you open your doors and you are taking people into the boarding school system. Every boarding school offers a promise. There is always a promise. And like we always say, a promise is a debt. I don't know whether a lot of people spend time to diligently identify what promises they are making as they open their doors. So as we have that at the back of our mind, I'd like to hear, um, KK, your thoughts and your views. Well, I mean, I, I was never in a boarding house, so you know, boarding school, boarding house, even in university, I was inside my father's house. So <laughs> it's interesting that I've never, yeah, I've never had that boarding experience. So I'm just going to talk based on um, ideals, really, and not from any personal experience because I don't have it. 
That's Titi. Titi is the body champion. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, when, when you think about a boarding house, so it's a, it's a, it should be maybe not a home away from home because it's a school, but it should be safe enough. It should be comfortable enough that the students are, are not, they're, they're somewhat happy to be there. I mean, if it's a day school, they know that there are certain structures that they must follow in the school. So when I think about boarding house, I think about, I mean, what has been put in place to ensure that, to safeguard the children in terms of waking up, taking a bath, eating, um, exercise, mindfulness, maybe watching a bit of TV, uh, working as well, because sometimes after school, there's work that needs to be done. And then, of course, sleeping, which is overnight sleeping. Then I think about weekends, and I'm like, what's the plan? What do they do over the weekends? I mean, but in all of this, when I think boarding school, I think the staff. So when I started my college, I actually was going to start with a boarding school. And the way we we're going to structure it was that we're going to have the school in one location and then have a boarding facility somewhere else. So the school and the boarding facility were not going to be together. That was because for the boarding facility, we wanted it to be different. We didn't want the children to have a sense of, I am in school. But we wanted them to have a sense of, oh, I finished with school, but I'm not done with schooling. To come back to a location where they were comfortable, there was going to be four people in a room. You know, so that was what we wanted. And why did I stop, you might wonder. When I thought about outfitting the place in terms of staffing, I knew that I was going to have it. I was, my blood pressure was just going to go through the roof. Because we're dealing with people's children here. How well was I going to get the people who had enough the value systems that uh, it's not just that they are in class, they are with you, you know, all night long. They wake up, they take a bath. Ah, you know, so me thinking about those things make me pull back and say, I can't handle this now. Not yet. Not yet. I would something would suffer. It's either I would compromise, um, I, I would something was gonna suffer, and I wasn't ready for anything to suffer, and that's why I pulled back. Thankfully, I hadn't sunk in a lot of money into that venture. If not, it would have been really bad. But you see, when I look at a lot of boarding houses, I realize that they're not really ready. They're not ready in terms of the mindset of the staff who are put in those boarding houses. For some of the team members, it's almost like it's a punishment. I should be in my house with my family. You said, I'm here with your own children, when your children should be with you at home. So sometimes that's the sense that I get. Um, another thing is expectations. And I believe Rotimi mentioned that, that there's, there's sometimes there's a dissonance between the promise and the delivery. If you cannot do something, don't say you can. And that's what I see with a lot of boarding houses. Some of them I believe are fabulous, but some of them overcompensate. And at the end of the day, you're raising children. By the time you understand the value systems that you want these children to imbibe, then I believe that we should run with it. So if I want my ch the children in my boarding house, for example, to wake up at a certain time of day and maybe say prayers before they take a bath, then I need to ensure that I do it. I need to ensure that I communicate those values from the very beginning, before the child is even allowed into the school. If not, be a day student. If I know that they're going to have prep between social time and social social time, I need to ensure that the person who is going to man the prep, the structures that the prep should follow, and communication to the parents is there. So that when the children go home and they mention, oh, we, we're always reading, they let the parents know, remember sections, so and so, so and so of our boarding house, house a uh, brochure said this. So th those are the things that I begin to see. I don't feel people are fully ready for the responsibility of boarding house. And I do not believe that sometimes, not for everyone, because I mean, I wasn't there. I, I don't believe that the communication is clear enough. And, and, and for me, that's where I stand with that. I believe it could be better uh, as in all things, really. When somebody has taken care of your children, you always think that it, they can be better. But um, I believe we should communicate better. We should staff people better. We should have almost like a psychoanalysis test before we allow, um, before we employ staff fully into the boarding house. And we should, I mean, I love the way if you talked about a whistleblowing system, we should actually have that whistleblowing system such that the person who blows the whistle is not put in trouble. For example, there was a time in one of the schools in, in Ogun State, I'm not going to mention the name of the school here. So a child, um, saw another an older child soliciting for sex really with another child in school <laughs> and the child who saw them went to report now they expelled all three children plus the one who reported plus the senior who was soliciting plus the victim 
And I don't understand all the sense was in that. There was no sense in it. It's something that they could have handled better. And that's why I talk about the fact that I don't think that we're fully ready in a lot of schools for those systems. Yeah? Over to you, Rotimi. I want to add. No, because I want to add. I'm thinking, I'm, 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 off your mic. <laughs> and if you was talking, and even as KK was talking, you know, remember what I said, that when it comes to a school generally, I and mean, a boarding school as well, is the fact a school needs to know and say to themselves honestly, what are all the things that can go wrong? And, you know, that's what we, that's what we term in risk management, whereby, and when you're designing processes, you say, what are all the things that can go wrong? And then start, what, what, what um, safeguards, what controls, what processes do I have go wrong? You know that one student on 13, you know, and the bodies, whether male or female, then we have issues of libido and all those things coming to. So even if seniors are not soliciting, you know, it will be, it could be amongst themselves. And there will always be the stronger against the weaker. You know, all children are not the same. Everybody's not extroverted. Everybody's not confident in themselves. Everybody is, you know, some people the, are just bullied. And some people, is, is, it's coming from where they're coming from. You know, at home, they're being bullied. Their parents are bullies. So they themselves become bullies. So you know that all those things will happen. Because I, I remember where I started, even in our own homes, you know, if you look at the home system, a lot of those things happen. If you're not, if you're not careful, those things won't happen. You know, where someone wants to eat two pieces of meat and goes eat everybody's food and is set out, and then one wise guy now goes and eats all the meat and carries, you know, those things happen. So the important thing is what are the safeguards that the school has put in place? How are you monitoring it? So let me, let me give a, a simple example. You know, some children at home, they eat lots of pizza, they eat all of this, they go to school where the food is a bit more regimented, where the excesses are away. The normal child is going to lose weight because even schools that have three square meals plus two snacks, the children lose weight because they're not drinking as much fizzy drinks, as much soda, they're not consuming as much sweets and chocolate. So when when parents come and say, oh, the child has lost, the child is really skinny. Import, that's why it's important that someone is monitoring these things. So when your child comes in, you know, they have to take the person's weight, they have to take the thing, they have to take that. Your guidance counselor needs to know that when children that are coming in for the first time, it's like, you know, what if you said about when you're dealing with small children, when you're, when, when you're dropping the children off for the first time in school, if you say that you're not expecting them to cry and have a wailing day, then those students are the exception. They're not the norm. So are you as you as a school, what structures have you put in place to manage that? So it's important that, you know, what KK said, that when you're in a boarding school, the structures are also driven by the people. So it's important that you have the right people in. The people that are, when you say who are the house parents, you know, the, the parents that the boarding, the, you know, the house parents or the schoolmasters inside each of the hostels, are they the right people? Do they have that motherly, you know, uh, motherly personality as against this is just a job? Because they are the ones that will see things. What are, if anything happens to a child, how soon must the parent be notified? When you notice this, how soon must the parent be notified? Last term, my son got injured. He, my son was not in the fight. Two people were he claimed he was passing by. And in the process of the two people who were pushing each other, he got pushed. He, he was pushed, he fell down, and he got injured. They called me immediately. They called me and said, this is what has happened. Speak to your son. You know, I, I, I spoke to him. So what, what happened? This is what happened. You know, is the injury serious? He told me this is what it is. You know, and, and like that. So it's the same thing. I said, what? Can children be together and someone will not fall down in the playground? Someone will not be injured? It's not possible. But what do you have in place to notify the parents? To tell them this is what we are doing. It, and that's, that's what it is. Sen once you have seniors, juniors, even in schools whereby they separated the junior school from the seniors, whereby um, GSS want to, uh, what is it, one set, SS and above it. Among the year one, uh, if they assess one, two, and three, they, they are same issues. It's the same issue because once human beings come together, a lot of it. So it's what can you do? You know, I talked about I think of all the things that happened in our own, you know, when I was in boarding school. But the difference is what if if those things were found out, 
the school was going to take action. They in themselves also tried constantly to put in structure, place things that would prevent that. We had the, um, uh, an adult living with us in the hostels, so that if anything happened, you knew. Is that to say nothing they have? No. They, they were time, light out. You know, is that to say that people will not be awake and still be just <laughs> and then sleep very late? There are all sorts of things, but things will continue to happen. I'm not sure there's any school that is perfect. It's to say, when these things happen, what do you do? How do you say, God, it's real current? So safe boarding school is a lot of work. I mean, even your children at home, it's a lot of work. How much more when there are so many? But have the structures, have the policies, and continue to monitor. Continue to monitor. Continue to identify those of them that are higher risk than others. Continue to have a, a very strong guidance counselor, uh, guidance counseling process that allows you to continue to assess these people. That's you know, what I would say. Thank you so much for that. Um, we 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 re, re really need to get people out there to know that. Um, it's it's very important for us to focus on the system when we talk about running a boarding school system 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 just like in real estate they say location 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 first it must be understood that every boarding school system is offering a promise being ignorant of that promise is non-acceptable we need to understand that a lot of people have their perceived value or perceived outcome why they chose a particular uh, service provider. And it is very important. We mustn't always be bargaining to the terms of Naira and Cobo alone. We also must be able to bargain to the terms of outcomes as well. So while we're able to say, this is the fee, this is how we do our stuff, this is our, these are our do's and don'ts. And, and we all know, and thankfully, KK, uh, Titi, and if you're, we all know the truth. Do's and don'ts do not necessarily make students. The laws that we, so for example, I've noticed, especially at the secondary school phase, it's the laws that we try to test the boundaries with. The time they say, don't make noise. I don't know what happens to us. That's the time your mouth is done with the summer, 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 summer. Once you hear don't, something inside of you says, try. You get my point? Don't cross. I had in my secondary school, there was this big field that refused to, the grass refused to grow. So they invested so much on the grass and the manure and everything. So I started growing, you know, it was looking promising, but there are patches in the field that just did not respond to all the interventions. So they had to make up their mind to say, you know what, put rope around the field. Guess what? The moment they put the rope, it became a jump for us. We started crossing. Then they put signboards uh, on the edges, do not walk across the field, take the path. That signboard, the moment it came, so people, would do, you just see people don't run, run across the field. It was almost like the moment you tell a student, don't do something, something inside of them says, test the boundaries, you know? Um, and so we must understand that you are offering a promise, but then your promise must always be backed up by performance. So it's almost like saying that we need to begin to look at it for us to run a safe body school system or a safe body system. We must be safe in our promise. We must be safe in our performance. That's the delivery of what we need to do. So that when discrepancies do occur, like Titi was saying, process case scenario, plan for all the possible things. Another thing that will happen is when you're saying you're planning for all the possible things, Titi, you're talking as an expert now. A lot of schools, eh? And I'll tell you some of my, my funny experiences. When you tell a school, okay, let's do scenario plan, planning and let's do case study and say, okay, what's the root cause analysis for A, B, C? The first thing people will tell you is, God forbid. Because if you want to really do process, process planning and review, you're going to think of every possible thing, good extreme and, of course, bad extremes. So, for example, what if? And then when you start using what if, then someone will ask you, excuse me, are you a sadist? Are you a pessimist? I thought you were a Christian. I thought that uh, I'm telling you, I can't say some things. I, I remember I was once confronted by a mission school um, while I was having, um, I was meeting with all their leaders. This school has 
all the policies with. They have fantastic strategy. In fact, they invested in all those, you know, background work. Unfortunately, the people that are driving the process, they have their own personal agenda. So they are making their private interpretation to make a mockery of all the good work that has been done. So if you ask, if you ask the school for documentation, Titi, you will do a standing ovation. But when you now look at the experience, the implementation, you feel like crying that why did you not waste all that money if you know you are not going to follow through on what you develop to the point where I made a scenario um, and I used something that happened in the UK as an I think they got a fine almost two million pounds because uh, there's a liquid that was left in the toilet. It's a, it's a cleaning liquid that was left in the toilet that a child got into the restroom and somehow, somehow, that liquid poured on the child's body and it bruised the skin. Not that the child died, not that the child was totally injured, just bruised the skin. Now, at the end of the day, it was a case of neglect. It mm -hmm. wasn't this, you know, that sometimes you say it's not my fault, but should that kind of corrosive liquid be within a child's reach? No, the church was found culpable. In the end of the story, it, it was two million pounds fine or something like that many years ago. Now think mm -hmm. about it in today's reality. Sometimes we want people to judge us by our intention rather than our actions. So in our intentions as service provider, we are the mm -hmm. best that there is. Our intention is to run a safe system. Our intention is to deliver value. But once we fail to understand that promise and performance mm -hmm. are Siamis twins, you can't separate them. For every promise, it must be backed up by performance. So a lot of times what happens is that you get situations like this and people start saying, well, you know us now. It wasn't like this, but the issue is on ground. So everyone must be mindful of that. There must be promise backed up by performance. And once those two things come together, it creates the issue of protection and perception in the right perspective. And then, of course, consequence management. A lot of times, mm -hmm. these things sometimes happen. And you, you, yes, you plan for the scenario, but some things do just happen. Either, either uh, it's a new scenario, or it's a wind chunk, or it's a manipulation, whatever it is. Things do happen that test the integrity of your system. At such time, the responsiveness or your show of preparedness is what comes to, not who is at fault. <laughs> Because a lot of time, we just want to say, who is at fault? Is it Tifiong that was at fault? Is it KK that was at fault? But we miss out on the entire scenario, right? And this is really something that we need our practitioners to look into. Running a safe system requires us to understand the promise we are delivering or the perceived promise expected of us. And we must back up every form of promise with performance. So let's let's take some comments. Titi, do you want to take us with some comments from our online? Okay. Um. Yes, I agree. I don't know whether the correct pronunciation is is something or stop stop saying. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you that uh, you know guidance counselor unit must be very active. It's it's also important. Boarding school is hard, and I, I think for me, the first two years are when the child adjusts. It, it's not easy for every child to adjust. For some, for some children, boarding school can, can how like set them back. Um, when my son went to, to, to boarding school, you know, that it was a finicky eater, so in school, he wasn't eating a lot. When he came back, it was like a bag of bones. Ah, I called the school off. <laughs> You know, so they just something I called the school, they had to just you know make concessions for him. So when other people are eating and he refuses to eat the food, they will give him you know milk and cookies and ask him he wants this and that. Ah, because he just came back half. <laughs> Did I, your mother, not know that he was a finicky eater? We are battling it here at home as well. But by the time he went to the boarding school, it was just too hard for him. He, 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 so my sisters were like, pull him out of this school, pull him out of this school. Ah, see what I say. Anyway. <laughs> I like what the, the best part of the 
Bolo Street the visiting days, you know, you meet your parents, they bring jollof rice. My son will send you a list of pizza, bring pizza, bring lollipop, bring all these things. So this was was the life, you know. But depending on the school you went to, you know how it is now. Some of us that I, I went to FGC over so my parents didn't come every visiting day. Uh, so when you look for your friends that live nearby in Oweri, or Takot, that their parents came and used to hang out with them and can chop free rice and <laughs> hope they'll give you something. Um, yeah, when I think of a boarding school, I think of the staff. It's, it's so important. The staff make a difference. Even when, even when the structures, the systems are not there, the staff can compensate. But the problem is that, as Rotimi said, when the staff leave, then, you know, the vacuum is there. So it's important you have both the staff and the people. Can you follow is saying, I keep, I think keeping the boarding school system running safely would depend on education, educate the children, the caregivers, the parents, you know, everybody needs to be educated. Gideon, Gideon is saying, serious stuff. Parents need to have and check the values of the school. Uh, Gideon, even if the school has the values, remember that it's coming with a mixed bag of children from various um, various backgrounds. It will take time. You know, it takes time, you know, to to for to you to unify the value system. It takes time, it's an uphill task. Some you can have a school that you you are you are you're very much into respect. Respect. But there's some children that where they're coming from, eh, their parents, no, no respect. So it takes time. It takes time to build a value system, a combined value system. Uh, I didn't finish reading this, so, but um, before you say that, talking about the staff, a comfortable renovation will be at least mm, ensure the caregivers are not stressed physically. <laughs> you know, I like what the uh, mentally, psychological, and financial. I usually say happy teachers, the school is a, is a happy school. It, it, it's a tough one. You know, I like what um, um, KK was saying about when she talked about the cost to really deliver on the promise. It's a tough one. When you think about the cost to really deliver on the promise, it can be tough. Um, but I look at it and say that there are, there are schools for everyone. There's the very high end that's meeting upon all the promise. And there's the basic promise that you can make. You mustn't make all, you know, all the promises. But whatever promise you make, try and deliver on it. Um, so I think it's important. It, boarding school is not easy. It's not affordable. There are too many things that can go wrong. You know, they can be um, they can be a breakout due to poor water system. Um, see what happened with QC. They can be a you know cold a, a Apollo breakout. You know why one person has Apollo in boarding school? You know that uh, it's going to do a lot of rounds. <laughs> it's the same thing. You know, in facility. I I, I think it was something that said facility is important. If you don't have good facilities, then the kids are going to come coming down with malaria because you know the mosquito nets are not properly done and um, and everything. It's it's a, it's a lot. It's a huge investment, but you need to ensure that you can deliver on the promise to provide a home outside home. Is what I would say. It's it's a lot. When I think of all the all the variables that happen, um, this term as the kids went back to school, ah, Gideon, thank you, chicken pox. <laughs> Once, <laughs> Gideon, I can see that Gideon followed me to boarding school. Though. You know, once one person has Gideon, to Gideon, Gideon is an administrator of a, of a school in Port Harcourt, and they run it. Yeah. It's a so boarding system, and trust me, he, he, he's speaking from experience. from experience. They have about over five hundred students yeah. in the school. Hey, they, they know that their child has chicken pox and it bodies and they still send them, you know, and they don't tell you. So, of course, before you know it, it's too late. There's now an outbreak of, of chicken pox. Then, even that, when, when the new children um, come in and they're not very tidy, I'm sorry if you haven't just said that. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Sorry. They have, they have this, you know, um, shingles. Should we call this shingles and scabies? Because the child. Scabies. Um, has not learned to take care of themselves. That's why sometimes you don't tell your child when they're not ready. The child has not learned to have a good bath, brush their teeth, you know, do those basic hygiene. And you send it, you know, add that to the burden of the house parents. And the child just breaks up with all this, all sorts of skin diseases. Or the child is even clean, but the child's um, skin is sensitive. And you didn't let the school know all that. My child is sensitive to, um, they only need pure cutting. No. Yes, sure. If you're over to you, then. <laughs> okay. Um, 
All right, I was just going to ask you, talking about all the, you know, um, issues that children could have, scabies, chicken po I was going to talk, I was just going to mention scabies, you know, and um, going from there, what medical provision or access do the children have? That's, that's a big one for boarding schools. I remember in my boarding school, all we had was um, a place, just the corner of the school where we called the clinic, there was a bed, and there was this small box with paracetamol inside. As far as I can remember, <laughs> that's all that was there. Paracetamol, methylated spirit, and um, cotton wool. W what is that? Is that medical provision? So um, that's something that, you know, needs to come into consideration. And also, as we're talking about the facilities that must be put in place, um, I will, it, it would be nice to, to see from the beginning, start as you intend to finish or as you intend to go on. It's lovely when, you, when you, you know, you're just starting, oh, we have this facility, we have this facility, we have this facility. But do you have a good maintenance culture to ensure that the facility stays updated and keeps um, providing what service it is meant for? So um, I think a lot of schools need to look into that. Um, setting up your structure in such a way that you have a good maintenance culture um, that would, you know, that that involves continuous risk assessments, continuous um, reflection, simulating um, worst case scenarios, you know, and take it from there to ensure that these facilities are kept up to date and are meeting the safety needs. Um, of the children. All right, thank you yep. so much. Um, I like to I like to say this, and I'm asking uh, this question before we end the show. Uh, I know that there is this concept and belief that boarding school is almost like the climax of instilling discipline into a child, and a lot of people that turn. <laughs> okay, let me finish. <laughs> a lot of people that turn to this as more or less like last resort, I know of many situations where some people bundle their kids down to Nigeria, didn't tell them their plan, you know, just, <laughs> just I know many, many, the child went to bed, I said, good night, daddy, and the daddy went back to US the next morning, only for the child to wake up 10 a.m., where's daddy, daddy's in US, eh? So they left the child to come to Nigeria to come for, you know, more or less like rehab in a school. So, how do we term discipline, right? Looking at it from the angle of the boarding school concept and mentality, because a lot of people feel the child must suffer to experience discipline and to be a product of one with Rubbish. discipline. Rubbish. So, how do we? <laughs> okay, to take it over to. You. <laughs> I mean, that in itself is just rubbish. <laughs> to imagine that. Is it's on. It's off. It's, 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 off. it's on. I said that in itself is just rubbish. To imagine that a school that is a haven for developing children now becomes a torture chamber. Uh -uh. There's something wrong with that entire statement. It, it, is, it, 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 it already underscores the ideology of what a school should be. Mm. Yes, children will learn discipline in self-discipline in school. And that is be not because we are, we, we are meant to be wicked and mindless uh, authoritarians in school. No, it's because we're able to get the children to reflect on their actions. We're able to say, you know what? This thing that happened, this is what it means potentially for your future. Can you take a look at it again? That's what it should be. Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, naive enough to imagine that in boarding schools, flogging is not going on. And I don't have a problem with flogging. I flog. It's an all right place for resetting the brain. But you cannot, <laughs> you cannot see that because you mean that the child loses their self-respect, loses mm -hmm. the yeah. of who simply because they do not want to express themselves. I think that is wrong. So I know people who went to boarding houses and they had a fabulous experience. I know some others who went there and they vowed that their children would never go. So you have these two sides of the of the spectrum, actually. But on the whole, I, I truly believe that 
in any boarding house, as in any school. It should be a place where, yes, you do not allow excesses, but it should also be a place where the children should understand that they are safe, emotionally safe, physically safe, socially safe, because that, in essence, is what we are meant to be. We are a place that builds nations. We are a place that runs on empathy. And if we take that out of the equation, then I am afraid of what we have become. Thank you. Is there any words on that? Okay, if you're use that as your parting shots. <laughs> Okay, so I, I want I just want to touch down on 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 the parenting. Okay, so if you are sending your child to boarding school because you want your child to learn discipline, or you want to, what are you doing as a parent? So this is where I I, I talk to people about um, intentional parenting. You go out there to find out information for yourself. How can I, as a parent, take responsibility for my child? How can I take responsibility for this? individual that I have brought into the world that I am fully responsible for. Sorry if I'm because I, I I go I go through this where a parent comes to me and says, look, my child is not listening to me at home. He's throwing things at home. He's doing this and he's so if you give your child um the leeway to um how, what was the word now if you give your child you know, the, the, the leeway to, to not listen or to be indisciplined, and you want to transfer that responsibility to someone else, then I think it's wrong. You know, so I think it's for everyone, every parent now to say, look, I am responsible for my child. I may need help at some point. And then you go out and get that help. So this is where um, counseling comes in. This is where um, you need some parenting classes. You need, But first we have to identify that raising a child is your major responsibility as a parent, raising your child mm -hmm. before you think of sending my child, sending your child to the boarding school to learn discipline. Fantastic. And Titi, last words as we end the show. Titi? I think as we end the show, I, I would want to say that, um, you know, when you send your child to boarding school, you are kind of handing over your responsibility of looking after your child to someone else. And before you do that, you need to ensure that you've done the necessary due diligence before you do that. Is the environment similar to yours at home? The value system similar to yours at home? Do they have all the care, you know, that would need to continue to allow your child to be nurtured? You know, Gideon said something about, you know, having a clinic, it's all those things, you know, because at home, what you're providing for your child is, body, soul, and spirit. So it's not just the academics. It's the fact that you're providing food essence, you know, a place for him to eat, for him to sleep. You're also providing an environment where he's comfortable and he's not just... If, if your child will not strive out of your home, you need to think twice before sending them to boarding school. If your child has some of those dependencies that ha would allow them to try outside of your home, you need to rethink sending them to a boarding school. Or what I would say, postpone sending them to a boarding school. So maybe till you feel that they're at that level where they can be nurtured outside of your home, then you wait. So boarding school is not for everyone. It's not, honestly. You, it, and each child, even three children from the same parent might not all be, we're not all blossom in the boarding school environment. So it's important that you know each of your children and say, is boarding school for them? And then even if it's boarding school, what kind of boarding school? Will the boarding school change for your child? No. So you need to find the boarding school that is for your child. Then they have, you know, in, 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 in school system, they're very, they're different extremes. There's the extreme where they're a bit very high on discipline. Is that the place for your child? Then maybe not. There are some that are balanced in this discipline. And there are some that are very loose with regards to the discipline. So you need to say, no school has it all, but looking at the best environment that will be for that one child, not for all your children. Don't try and make that mistake of saying, eh, I want them to all go to the same school so I don't have to be going to different uh, schools for it all your children might not blossom in the same environment you need to be careful of that so i would end by saying boarding school is not for everyone 
look and understand your child and look for the environment that would help your child you know blossom to be the best that they can be so you must do serious due diligence and say is that boarding school that particular boarding school for your child thank you thank you so much um we've had so much to say today and so little time and i know if we had the opportunity we would go on and on but of course the time has come for us to end the show we have fantastic comments on facebook a lot of people cheering us on we appreciate you uh and we believe that uh it's going to be better as we keep on applying these things please like our videos share our videos um subscribe to the channel and of course follow our analyst kk is online on facebook on instagram on twitter she's everywhere if york is online she's everywhere um titi adeus is online she's everywhere broda is online she's everywhere um eben is everywhere jude is everywhere um even though they are not here today safety chick is also everywhere but they are not here today and routine definitely is everywhere wherever you look for me i'm there and of course, like we normally will have to do it, we sign off with our conscious statement on the show, believing that it's going to be that same reality for you all, right? Not just for Gideon, not just for, for all those who communicated with God, but for everyone. This is our promise to you for the day. This is our promise to you for the week. And I would like the ladies to take it off, as we say, our sign off word for the day. It's so, always a good morning. Okay, if your mic is on mute, kick his mic. <laughs> I think I think if your if your camera is frozen, so I ring a bell of blessing to to that. So it's always a great morning. Morning. Have a good morning. Morning.